a little bit. Let's go back through these again. First of all, the first thing he did was he gave us inheritance. He gave us, made us partake of the inheritance of the saints in, in light. Second, what he did, he delivered us from the power of darkness. We know that's death. He delivered us from death. He delivered us from death. He delivered us from flesh, from Adam, from this world. And then he, now we are on the day is he translated us. That's what we're talking about today. He translated us. And then I gave you some definitions. We're going to go right back to that teaching today. God translated us into his kingdom. So we have to know where are all those people who died in Christ. They are in the kingdom. They're in God's kingdom. God's kingdom is called the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. It's all God's kingdom. And that's where all the believers that have gone on in Christ that's where they are. They are in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of heaven. All right? That's where they are. All right? And that's where we are if you're in Christ. That's why. You don't wait to die and go there. You've got to be born of the Spirit to go there. Now, we're going to pray. We're going to get right into God's Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for your eternal salvation. We give you all the praise now and all the glory all the honor. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your truth. We give you all the praise. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the double potion. Yes, sir. Gave us your grace and your truth. In the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all the read that prayer says, Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter number 1. Because in Colossians chapter number 1, I'm going to start reading with verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father. Remember, that is our series. You're going to hear that over and over and over because we are showing you where your blessing come from. Everything you get comes from above. From the Father of lights. We talked about the Father of lights. We talked about the Father of glory. We talked about the Father of spirits. See, all that's our Heavenly Father. Father of mercies. See, those are the, Holy, the Father's name. The Father of mercies, the Father of glory, the Father of lights. Uh, we talked about all Him being the Father. Okay? Now, giving thanks to the Father which has made us to be partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. So God has made us partakers of his inheritance, and we showed you his inheritance. It's not just all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It is, but it's also eternal life. So he made us partakers of his eternal life. Then in verse number 13, that's what we own now, he had delivered us from the power of darkness. We talked about that. That darkness is Adam. That darkness is flesh. That darkness is this world. So he has delivered us from this world, delivered us from flesh, see? And now what else he did? He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now that's what we talk about today. But it doesn't, if you hear the look at the word, he has translated us. He has, so Paul is talking about that because he's saved. He's ministering to the church who's saved. He has translated us. Now, you want to write that word down, translate it, because we're going to get a little further today than we did before. Hope you go back and uh, uh, watch that 9 o'clock uh, live services for one hour. And if you don't get a chance to do it, it'll be on podcast coming up, okay? You, if you miss anything on Sunday, always get it on the podcast, all right? So we'll be able to go over that during the podcast. All right, now. We want to talk about the word translate uh, because translate has, is a powerful word. We know it means transfer. We know it means uh, transform. See, all those words, it's a word translate, change. But I want to show you what happened. God removed, to translate means to remove from earth to heaven as a human now but without death. Now, it's an awesome thing to God to take you from earth to heaven, 
without dying. How are he going to do it? He's going to translate you. Now, that's, it's, this is what happened to every believer. Somebody said translate. This is what happened to every believer in Christ. You are not in the flesh anymore. Let me show you that in Romans chapter number 8. God has translated you. That's Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at verse number uh, 8. Romans 8 and 8. It says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Then in verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. How you get in the spirit? God translated you. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he none of his. And if, the, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But life because of righteousness. The spirit now become life because of righteousness. Look at verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, here's another word, quicken, and that's another word where we're going to look at today, transform. He quickened you by the spirit that lives in you. He made you alive. He quickened you, transformed you, translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. All right, let's look at, let's look at this in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. We talk about the word quickened. We're going to give them to you now. Ephesians chapter 2, and we want to look at verse 1, then I want to skip down and look at verse 5 and 6. Ephesians chapter number 2, talk about the word quickened. Verse 1. And you, now you know he's talking about the soul of man, and you has he quickened. What part of you was made alive, your soul? Who were dead in trespass and sin? Well, what part of you were dead in trespass and sin? Your soul. We're going to show you that he has quickened you, made you alive. We see that same verse in verse number 11, Ephesians 2 and verse 11. Wherefore, remember that being in time past in the flesh, that's where we were, we were calling circumcision by that by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time we were without Christ, being alienated, or aliens, from the commonwealth of Israel, we were strangers of the covenant of promise. We have no hope, and we were without, without God in the world. But then in verse 13, told us how we were saved. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometime were far off, were made not by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And what did he do? And that he might reconcile both to God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He reconciled, he restored us back to God by the cross. That's why we have the cross, because that means restoration in Christ. God used the cross, the death of his son on the cross to restore us, reconcile us back to God. All right, now, that means quicken. We gave you Romans chapter number two, uh, uh, Romans chapter eight, I'm sorry. Let's look at Colossians two. Colossians chapter 2, we want to look at verse uh, 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 2, talk about quicken, quicken. Colossians 2 and verse number uh, 10 say, you are complete in Christ. Say that with me. You are complete in Christ, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made with hands, and putting off the body, this is what, what he did, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. How do we do it? By the circumcision of Christ. That's how we did it. Bear with him in baptism, even wherein you were risen with him through the operation of God, has raised us up together, made us, and you, and you, in verse number 13, God raised us up, raised us up together with Christ. Verse 13 says, and you being dead in your sin, this is where we were. Our soul was dead in sins. And the uncircumcision of our flesh has he quickened together with Christ. 
having forgiven us all trespasses. That's what God did with us. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailed it to his cross. And then the Bible said in verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made us show them openly, triumphing over them in it. What a mighty God we serve. All of this stuff that man was held bondage by the law and all of the things God called them principalities and power. And how he spoiled the principalities and powers. Principalities and powers are teachings and doctrines of the old covenant. God set us free. He quickened us, made us alive. That's why we have another word, renew. Renew. We're going to look at that word right now. All these words mean translated. And I'm going to show you right now in just a moment. Let's look at the word renew. Isaiah chapter 40. Hallelujah. See, he renewed my mind. He renewed me, put me in Christ, made us a new creation. So that's what you got to understand. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. What happened? God has renewed your mind, giving you a new mind. You got the mind of Christ. Tell somebody that you have the mind of Christ. Isaiah chapter number 40. Watch this verse jump off the page. Isaiah 40 and verse 21. We are talking about the word renew. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? Verse 28. Isaiah 40 and 28. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Faineth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gave power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But, oh my God, somebody said, but God. It said, but they that wait upon the Lord. Now, to wait upon the Lord really means to minister to him. Praise him, worship him, serve him. They that wait upon the Lord the, shall renew their strength. Now just think about it. Now that's what happened to you when you got saved. God renewed your strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's what happened when a person is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount out with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah, that's what it means when God renews you. Amen. Isaiah 41 right there. Look at Isaiah 41. We look at verse 1 and verse 10. Verse 1 says, Keep silent before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Praise God. Ain't that something? God said, let the people renew their strength. Look at verse number 10. Watch what God said about us. Said about Israel first, but we inherit this in Christ. Watch what it says, Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you. Come on, tell somebody that this morning. This is what God said. God said, I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will withhold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, not only, not only God going to hold you up, he said, I'm going to strengthen you, and then I'm going to be your God. Don't you fear, because the Lord is with you. You need to tell somebody that this morning. You out there on Facebook, you out there on our, our website this morning, tell somebody the Lord is with you. You don't have to be afraid. I know you're going through this pandemic and going through all this stuff. Death is all around me. But I don't, you don't have to be afraid. The Lord is with you. The Lord said something. He says, I'm with you. I'm here to help you. That's what God said. I will hold you with my right hand and my righteousness. I will strengthen you. I, I am your God. Not I'll be your God, but I, I am your God. He said he's with you. Now that's one of the greatest things that we got to understand as Christians we got to know that the Lord is right here. He's right inside this house. He lives here. So he's in me. He's with me. He's, he's around me. I mean, he, he, he every, everything. What a mighty God we serve. All right, now look at, look at this thing real good. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. 
He talked about the word renew. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. See, this is what happened to you when you got saved. Verse number 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 says, All things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. There it is. We faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, there it is, is renewed day by day. So you never have to worry about the inward man. He's renewed day by day. Thank God for that word renewed this morning. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Just keep going. This this is just an awesome word here, renewed. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 23. Look what the word of God says. In verse 22, put off the former conversation, old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now, that's what we did when we got saved. Then what happened? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, that's what happened. You got saved. You put off the old man, Adam, and you're in Christ. Now you're renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man. That's what has happened to us, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. See, that's what has happened to us. We got on a new man. We're in Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. This, this word just goes on and on. So awesome. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. One hour word. That's what I promise you. One hour. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 10. Verse 8 says, but, but now put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blast. That's, that's an old man. Feel the communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seeing you have put off the old man. See, we put that man off with his deeds. And then what do we do? In verse 10 said, we have put on the new man. The new man, which is renewed. This, re- this new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See, you got on a new man. You got a new mind. Give God his praise. Give God his praise. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. Giving thanks to the Father. That, that's the word. Giving thanks to the Father. He's worthy to be praised. Let's look at another one. Titus chapter 3. I want to read that out of the NLT. I know some of you have been holding NLT for a while. Titus chapter number 3. Let's go over there and read that out of Titus chapter 3 for you. Titus chapter number 3. What an awesome verse. Verse number 5. I'm, I'm going to start reading verse 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. Once we too were foolish, Paul says, disobedience, we were misled. And because, of, because we became slaves to many lusts and pleasures, our lives were full of evil and envy. And watch this, we hated each other. But when our God, when, well, when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. Not because of the righteous thing we have done, but because of his mercy. Somebody said mercy, his mercy. Yeah, watch what he did. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. Verse 6 says, He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of His grace, He declared us right and gave us confidence that we would inherit eternal life. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. See, the, he renewed the Holy, renewed in the Holy Ghost in us. Look at Hebrew chapter 9. Hebrew chapter 9. What, what an awesome God we serve. Now, this, this is, this is, we're going we gonna to get into some things this morning because I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. Hebrew chapter 9. I'm not going to be able to do Hebrews right now. I can see that right now. Let's go to, let's go to uh, Luke chapter number 17 first. I'm not going to be able to do that. Get there, I won't be able to get back. Let's go to Luke 17. Now, in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, there was a question that was asked our Lord Jesus. Luke 17 and 20. I'm going to wait for you. Luke 17 and 20. I'm back in the King James. And when he was the man of the Pharisees, watch this, when the kingdom of God should come. Now, you got a lot of people today still waiting on the kingdom to come. Just think about what I just said. Jesus is already here. 
2,000 years ago talking to his disciples about the kingdom. And he said to them, the kingdom of God coming not with observation. See, what, what, what people are still waiting for today, they wait for Jesus to come back. They wait for Jesus to come. Listen, you need to make sure you're in the kingdom because that's your portion. Watch what it says. When he was the man of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God shall come. He asked them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Now, what does it mean to say the kingdom of God cometh not with observation? Now, you ought to be able to understand that if the kingdom of God come not with observation, that means an outward show. That means you're not able to see it. See, but people don't, people don't want the kingdom. They want Jesus. See, Jesus came for them. The kingdom came for you. But you don't know what the kingdom is. So you still wait for Jesus. That's the Old Testament. 95% of the church is waiting for Jesus to come back and don't realize he already sent them the kingdom. And most of them don't even have it. Don't even know what it is. Watch what it is. The kingdom of God coming not with observation, verse 20. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that reference and we're going to show you in the different places what did the word of God says. Watch what he says. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Today we will say, look here, look there, right? But watch what he says. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Wait a minute. People are looking for the kingdom. They're looking for Christ. God already told you he cometh not with observation. If he doesn't come with observation, how you know you have received him? Need to get this morning tape. The kingdom of God is within you. All right, now let's run this down. I'm going to do Luke while we're there. Go to Luke 21 and 8. The Gospel of St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 8. He said, take heed that you be not deceived. Many shall come in my name saying, watch this, I am Christ. I am Christ. And the time draws near, go ye not, go, don't go after them. Because they're going to come and say, I'm Christ. All right. Now, let's go to Matthew 24, 23. We're going all the way back to Matthew 24, 23. Watch what the word says. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 23. Then if any man say to you, watch what he says now. Now, he just got through teaching them that there's going to be a great tribulation in verse 21. Then in verse 23, he said, Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ. Wait a minute, he didn't say the kingdom. He said, He is Christ, or there. Don't believe it. See, when somebody said, Oh, here's Christ, there's Christ, don't believe it. Because he's coming without observation. And the kingdom of God is within you. Well, really, really, who really is in you? Christ, right? So if Christ has already come and Christ is already in you, why do you look for another? You're doing the same thing John the Baptist did. John the Baptist said to Jesus, are you the one that should come or do we look for another? So you know what the church has done? Christ has come and they say, oh, Christ is in me, I'm saved and born again. And yet they look for another. Well, let's put it this way. Are you married? You got a wife? Why do you look for another? All right. Watch what it says, Matthew 24 and 23. Then if any man said to you, Lo, he is Christ, or there, believe it not. Don't believe it. Why? Because the kingdom of God come with, not with observation. Luke 17 and verse 20 through 23. Let's show you that in Mark 13, 21. 
Mark, he taught this in every book. Mark chapter 13. Let's look at that. See, that's what he told you. He told you Christ. And only in Luke he's going to set the kingdom. Mark 13, 21. And then if any man said to you, lo, here is Christ. Or lo, there is Christ. Believe him not. False Christ, false prophet going to rise, share this, show signs and wonders to seduce even what's possible, even the very lack. But take heed that behold, I have foretold you all things. Now, if they said Christ, if they said Christ, don't believe it. So let's go back to Luke. What did he tell you? The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 20. And chapter 17, I'm sorry. Luke, chapter 17, and verse 20. And when, the, when he demanded the Pharisee, well, when the kingdom of God shall come? He answered them and said, the kingdom of God coming not with observation. Now, who is he talking about that's going to come? Christ. So really, Christ is the kingdom of God. But it doesn't come with observation. Because the kingdom of God, in verse 21, says, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. All right? But let's go on. We'll get on that next week. We're gonna, we just want to introduce it today. But next week, we want to really show it to you. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Because he said something about the word translated. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. All the way back to Genesis. I'm going to show you a couple of people that was translated. Then I'm going to show you what that means. From the book of Genesis, chapter number 5. Let's show you where we get the word translated. Genesis 5 and verse 21. We're going to talk about Enoch. And Enoch. Genesis 5, 21. And Enoch lived 65 years. How old was Enoch? 65 years old. But something happened with Enoch. Enoch was lived 65 years old and begot Methuselah. Enoch walked with God. Now, what walk with God mean fellowship with God. After he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch, what? There it is, 365 years. Here's again, verse, going to say the same thing it said in verse 22, verse 24. Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God did what? Took him. Now, if God took him, that means they could not see him anymore, right? right? But that really was not the case. God took him. But Old Testament was types and shadows. So what happened with Enoch in the Old Testament happened with us in the New Testament. But at the same time, we are still here. Now let's go show you the same thing. In Hebrews, what happened to Enoch? Let's go to Hebrews and see. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, what happened to Enoch? Look at somebody and say, what happened to Enoch? Yeah. And he was not, for God took him. Well, if God took him, took him where? Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 5. By faith. Now don't, don't forget the word by faith because we know the word by faith according to Romans 3.30. By faith means how the Jews live or how people in the Old Testament live. They live by faith. How we live in the new covenant after the cross, we live through faith. Through faith means by the gospel. We live by the gospel. We are saved by the gospel. Everything happening in our life is by the preaching of the gospel. They live by faith. By faith to them was works. By faith to them was what they did. So when you read 
uh, the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, you'll be able to see by faith Abraham, by faith Abel, by faith Enoch, what, I mean by faith Noah. What did Noah do? See, by their works. What did Abel do? What did Abraham do? See, everybody did something. Because they were saved by faith. By faith means what they did. God told Noah to build an ark. He did it by faith. God told Abraham to put his own son on the altar. That was by faith. Abel brought a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith. Everything happened by faith. Amen. All right. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 by 5. In verse 5, I'm sorry. By faith, Enoch was translated. How was he translated? By faith. He was translated by faith. That he should not see death. Now he told you what happened when he was translated. By faith, Enoch was translated. Watch this. That he should not see death. Somebody says see death. Now, you must understand why, you, why your eyes must be open in the new covenant I gave you at this 9 o'clock service. This man was blind, but now he could see. But now he could see spiritually. Now, something happened to this man. And the Bible says he was translated. That means that God saved him. He was translated... That he should not see death. What happened when you're translated? One more time. If you listen to me on Facebook, what happened when you're translated? You shall not see death. What happened when you're translated? You will, you will not see death. Look at somebody and say, you will never see death. You've been translated. See, God saved you out of death in Adam, the world, the flesh, that's what death at. And he translated you into the kingdom of his son. Everybody got it? There's no death in the kingdom. There's only life, eternal life. All right. Now we got to look at this real good. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Watch this. And was not found. Why? Because God has translated him. He wasn't found. Nobody could find him. He was translated. Just like right now when God translates you, the old man can't be found no more. Oh, I hope you can hear me. See, to be saved means God has translated you into the kingdom of God. Their son, the old man is dead. That's how you know you're saved. So if people still recognize you as the same old person they knew five years ago, then you not saved. The old man not died. Watch what he says. They couldn't find him. Can anybody find your old man? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Why? Because God has translated him. For because before his translation, he had this testimony that he would please God. Now, you can't please God without faith, so we know that he had to have faith, right? This man was saved. Now, but let me show you what happened to him. Go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, and verse 24. What happened to Enoch, Pastor? John, chapter 5. Well, he was translated that he should not see that. That's what happened to him. What happened to him, Pastor? He was translated. It's because he was translated, he did not see death. Well, if you've been translated into the kingdom of God, dear son, you'll never see death. Come on, tell somebody that again. If you've been translated into the kingdom of God, dear son, if you are saved, if you're born of the Spirit, you'll never see death. Watch what Jesus Christ told his, his followers in John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my words and believeth on him that sent me hath, not going to get, has everlasting life. And here's the second thing, 
shall not come into condemnation. That's why Romans tell us there therefore now no condemnation, Romans 8 and 1, to them in Christ. So he tells them, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not, number two, shall not come into condemnation. Verse three is, here it is, but it's passed from death to life. Now what is passed from death to life? One word, translated. So if God, if God translated you, that means he saved your soul. What did he do with your soul? He translated you. Remember, let me give you the definition for the word translated one more time. Here we go. The word translated means to remove from earth to heaven as a human being without dying. Without dying. So if God translated Enoch, what does it really mean? God saved thee not. And the man that they saved, they couldn't find the old man no more. When somebody come around you, which man would they see? Would they see the old man or would they see the new man? Because if you've been translated, the old man do not supposed to be found. He's dead. Your new man had been quickened, made alive. You are a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is what happened here. Let me read it again. John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation. Here it is, but is passed from death to life. But is passed from death to life. What happened? Been translated. Let me show it to you again. 1 John chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Going to get a little serious here. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 14 in particular. But we're going to start with verse number 11. 1 John chapter number 3 and verse 11. This is the message. Now, John is ministering to the church of God. This is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Somebody said love one another. Why did they covenant have on it love one another? I'm going to show you that in this teaching. Then it says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him. Here it is. Because his own works were evil. What was his own works? They were evil. Now, when God saved you, what does he do when he saved you? Remember they asked Jesus Christ, how may we work the works of God? John chapter 6, verse 28, 29. This is the work of God that you believe. Well, their works were evil. So what were their works? Come on, take, believe, and flip it. Just take, come on, take, believe, and flip it. What you got? Right. It's just like a cola. If you got a cola, what's an on cola? So when you don't understand, just put on you in before the word belief. So if belief, if belief that were their works were good works, then what are evil works? Unbelief. Unbelief is man evil works. All right, so let's look at this again. 1 John chapter 3. Because their works were evil, and his brother righteous. Now in verse 13, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now here's my key verse. We know that we have passed from death to life. Now, watch this. Here's John talking to the church. The church of God at that time, they was not taken up yet. But he said to them, we know we have passed from death to life. How in the world can I say to the body of Christ, you have passed from death to life? You've been made alive. You've been quicker. You've been raised from the dead. You've been translated. You've been transformed. You've been transferred. 
You are now a citizen of heaven. As a matter of fact, the Bible said we sit together in heavenly places in Christ. As a matter of fact, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. See, all of those things comes out, right? Look at, look at this again. 1 John 3, 14. We know we have passed from death to life. Why? Because we love the brethren. What's the reason? Come on now, that's very important. I want to show you something. Because we what? Love, love the brethren. We love the brother. Now watch what it says. He that loveth his brother. Now remember, I'm going to go to 1 John 2 after this. And I'm going to read verse 9. Watch this. We in, we in 1 John 3, 14 again. We know that we have passed from death to life. Why? Because we love the brother. He that loveth his brother abide. Wait a minute. He that loveth not his brother now, this is very important. I'm going to show you. He that loveth not his brother, wh where does he live? He's still in the old man, right? Because that's where death is. See, sin, death is in the old man, in Adam. You cannot, if God has delivered you from the old man, he gave you his love. This morning we started on this. We told you God gave you his faith. God gave you his grace. Well, here's another one. He gave you his love. So if you've really been born of the Spirit, you've been born of what? You've been born of love. So people that can't love, don't drop the cup, has not been born of God. When you can't love, you, can't, you have not been born of God. Now watch what it says. We know that we have passed. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we know in, in, in the old man there is hate, all those wicked works, unbelief, sin, death, all that's in the old man Adam. We know we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in one word, death. So that means he's still in the old man. When you can't love, you can't walk in love, you in the old man, Adam, you are still living in death. You are still living in the old man. Now watch what he tell you in the next verse. Wherefore, Whosoever hated his brother, we're in verse 15, 1 John 3, 15. Oh, I'm enjoying this word, aren't you? 1 John 3, 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. You know that no murderer, watch this, hath eternal life abided in him. Hereby perceive ye the love of God. This is how you know you got the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, we also ought to lay down our life for our brother. Now that's the covenant that they were under, they had to love one another. And because they couldn't love, then they abide in death. But watch what happens. You remember I said to you in, a, in, in 2 Corinthians, let me read this in, in 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to come back in 1 John 2, 9. But I want to read this in 2 Corinthians because I, I want to teach this at this time. The word of God just came to this, and I want to show it to you. Now, we always quote 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 3. It said, but if our gospel be hid, watch this now. It is hid to them that are lost. So we want to make sure we circle that word, lost. I'm going to give you some words. One of them is lost. Somebody said lost. This person is lost. If our gospel is hid from him, he cannot understand the gospel that I'm preaching to him. He's lost. Somebody say he's lost. Then in verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. So this guy is blinded. Somebody say he's lost. He's blinded and he believed not. Right. His mind is blinded. So because he's blinded, 
He's lost. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine under him. Now let's go and see how he got blinded. Oh, this is so good. I'm going to show you how people are blinded, how people are lost. See, when you can't love, you're blinded and you're lost. Say that with me. When you can't walk in love, you're blinded and you're still lost. See, you're still living in Adam. You're still not saved. Now watch what he's told you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is what, Paul, what John told the church. In verse number 9, 1 John 2, 9. He that saith he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. Just think about it. If I say I'm in the light, I'm in Christ. I say I'm in Christ. But what, watch what I'm doing. If I say I'm in Christ, and if I hate my brother, watch what happened. See, if you, can, if you can hate, you are still in darkness. Say that with me. If you can still hate one another, you are still in darkness. So we have to be, we have to be very careful when people treat us a certain way, when people act toward us a certain way. You still got to love them. Come on, look at somebody and say, you still got to love them. It doesn't matter. You, you are born again Christian. You still have to love. You don't have hate in your heart. Come on, say it with me. See, I don't have hate in my heart. I got love in my heart. Right. So regardless of how people act toward you, you still got to love them. That don't mean you got to be happy with what they're doing but you can't hate them. You can't hate. Don't ever use that word as a born again believer to say, I hate them. But I hate her. I hate him. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You don't hate him because you're supposed to pray for them that despitefully use you. Say all manner evil against you falsely. So regardless of how people treat you, you still got to love them and pray for them and, and live your life before the Lord and walk it in love. All right, that's the life of a believer. All right, now watch this, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 9. He that saith he's in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. But he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. So how do I walk in the light? I got to abide in love. Now, this is very important because what happened to Enoch? Enoch walked with God. And he was not. God took him. Fellowship with God. God took him. So you got to walk in love. If you don't walk in love, you can't walk with God. You can't fellowship with God. See, that's why this Bible teaches, how can I say I love God and I hate, I, I hate my brother I see every day? And then I turn around and say I love God. Now, if you love God, you also ought to do what? You got to also love one another. Th that's, that's what this is about. But watch what it says in verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. There's no occasion of stumbling in him, no darkness. No darkness in him. Verse 11 said, but he that hated his brother is in darkness. Don't forget that. You can, if you're hating one another, you're still in darkness. And you're walking in darkness. And you know it's not where you go with. Because that darkness has blinded your eyes. There it is. How were their eyes blinded? Remember, I gave you a, a trivia question. I said, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. This is what I says. I says, Paul says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid for them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Wait a minute. 
if the godless world blinded their mind, what did he use? He used hatred. The godless world used hatred to blind the minds of people. Because you didn't learn how to hate from God. You learned how to hate from the people of the world. And that's why you cannot get involved hating one another. Don't get involved. Whatever you do in word and deed, you got to do all to the glory of God the Father. You cannot do things out of hate. You can't do things hating one another. You can't do that. Your motivator got to be love. You do things because you love them. Do they deserve it? No. Did you deserve it? No. But God loved you. And that makes you, you the one got God's love, you got to love them also. Isn't that something? What, what a mighty God we serve. I, I'm not done with you. I got to show you one more. What a mighty God we serve. Now, let's go and show you one more. Now, this is going to be just a little extra on, on, on the, on the, for you today. Just because you turn into this broadcast, I'm going to give you a little extra one. How many ever heard about Elijah and Elisha? How many people have heard about Elijah and Elisha? Now, if we go and look these guys up, we're going to go to 2 Kings uh, chapter number 2. We got about five minutes. I'm going to share a little bit with you. Because in 2 Kings chapter 2, we have Elijah, which is the father, Elisha was one of the prophets or one of the sons. Okay? Now, watch what happens here. Elijah going to be taken up. Now, remember, all this Old Testament was typed in shadows. That's why I told you in Old Testament, they were actually physically taken up. That's not in the New Covenant. They were taken up in the New Covenant. Christ came down in the Second Covenant. In the, in, the, in the old covenant, they were taken up. You don't find that in the new covenant because Christ came down. When Jesus came to his 12 disciples, he said this to them, pray thy kingdom come. The kingdom came here. Christ came here. Old Testament, you can see Enoch. And Elijah was taken up. Let's show you this. We are in uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. You're going to have to read this yourself because I'm not going to be able to do it for you. There were three stops that Elijah made. Each stop, the prophet is going to say something to Elisha. To Elisha. Elijah, the father, is going to be taken up. They came to number one, Bethel. That's the first three verses. And watch what the prophet is going to say. Do you know that your Lord will be taken away? God going to take away your master? Take away your head from you today? He said, yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. Then they went to Jordan. The prophet that Jordan says in verse 5, the son of the prophets was Jericho. I'm sorry, it was Bethel, then Jericho. He said, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from your head today? He said, oh, I know it. Hold your peace. Now they go to verse number six, Jordan. The 50 prophets went and got their seats because they knew it was about to happen. They said to him, as they stood in view or far off, they came by Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and he wrapped it, smote it, the waters, and they were divided hither and thither so that they went over on dry ground. And watch what it says in verse 9. It came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said to Elijah, Ask, what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? Elijah says, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. 
Somebody said double portion. One more time, said double potion. What did Elisha want from Elijah? He wanted a double potion. How many know he got it? How many know you got it? How many know what it is? Yeah, you got it. He said, ask what I would do for you. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit to be upon me. And then watch what is happening. Verse 10, he says, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken up from you. Qualification. What he had to do. He had to see him when he was taken up. And it shall be to you. If not, it shall not be. So otherwise, you got to see me when I'm taken up. And the Bible said, came to pass when they went on and talked. Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Somebody said, chariot of fire. Yeah, and horses of fire. And they parted them both asunder. Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha saw it. The 50 prophet saw it. And watch what happened. Where did he go? He went up by a whirlwind into heaven, verse 11. Elijah saw it. And he said, my father, my father, the cherubs of Israel and the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more. He took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Took up the mantle of Elijah that fell upon him. Went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell upon him and smote the waters and says, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Now, Elijah went over. What happened to the fifth of prophet? They went looking for Elijah. Because they thought he was over in the woods somewhere. Let's go find him. Elijah went on about his business. He got the mountain and went on. Now, what was this in the new covenant? How many know what it was? Let me show it to you. The book of Acts, chapter number one. I know you already knew, but let me show it to you again. Acts chapter one and verse nine. This was the story of Jesus about to leave. And what is he going to do before he leaves? He's going to give these guys the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. Cloud received them out of their sight. A cloud of witnesses. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, he went up, beholding. Here come two men stood by them in white power. Why the pale and says, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. It was the Galileans who saw him go into heaven. He came back to that same mountain where they saw him go up. Why? He was a fulfillment of Elijah. He was translated. He was translated. What an awesome God. That's why when you get to Hebrews, my time already gone, but let me give you one verse. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. And Christ becoming high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once. What did he enter into? The holy place. Where did Jesus go when he rose from the dead? He went into the holy place. Why did he do that? To obtain e eternal redemption for us. But man, look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice from these. Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. That's just a figure of the truth. But in the heaven itself, to appear in the presence of God for us. Well, where did Jesus go? He went into, the, he went into heaven itself. Don't drop your cup. Well, where was heaven itself? It's the holy place. Well, what's the holy place? It's the church. It's the body of Christ. You want to know what Christ said? He's in the body. He's in the holy place. 
He's in heaven itself. All these other types and stuff. The temple, oh, he's not in the physical temple, but he is in the temple. No, you're not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you and you're not your own, you're bought with a price. Yeah, God is in the temple. He's in the holy place. He's in heaven itself. Don't drop your cup. My time is up.